Hi everyone. So I have a different kind of video for you today. Maybe not so interesting to a lot of people out there, but I just felt like I wanted to kind of address something that I posted about on Twitter and Instagram. And it's uh, YouTube has changed their partner policy. So now they, before they had very minimal requirements on who could monetize videos, which is basically turning on ads and getting a little tiny, tiny portion of the revenue from that. So um, they, I think it was about maybe a year ago or maybe less, they had a requirement of 10,000 views on a channel, which uh, my channel has like 216,000 views over the lifetime. And so that was no problem. I definitely qualified for that. And I've had monetized videos for a while now. There was a good chunk of time where the first couple of years I did not have ads turned on and I felt like, you know, I was just doing it for fun and it didn't make sense to have ads. I didn't want to have ads. And then it got to a point where it's like, well, you know, I put a lot of money, time, effort, all this stuff into it. It would be nice if I could get a little, little something back. And that kind of provides a little motivation too, to keep going. And, you know, everybody wants to kind of, grow their channel and reach more people and hopefully help more people and all that stuff. But it's also nice to get a little something back when you do spend the time, the money, the energy on something like this, because while it is a hobby, it's an expensive one. So if there's an ability to make back some of that money, I think pretty much most people are going to jump on that, especially because I don't work because I stay home with my kids. So it's nice to have a little, little something. A little something on the side. So they sent an email yesterday that said basically um, we have changed the the requirements to be a partner and now a channel needs to have 1,000 subscribers along with 4,000 hours of watch time in the past 12 months. So my channel has almost a thousand subscribers, but not quite. And it also is very much under that $4,000 or 4,000 hour watch time. Fuel oil truck, very noisy. Um, as of the last 12 months, I had about 2,700 hours of watch time. So that's a good, 1300 hours under the new requirement. So I got this email and immediately I got super duper upset. Like it would seem much more upset than would make sense for something like this. And I've been really trying to think about it, you know, figure out what, what exactly about this change is so upsetting and why has it bothered me so much? And there's, it's, it's a multifaceted type situation. So I've been making videos for four to five years. Um, I have, this will be, I think 239 is the 239th video that I've made and uploaded. And, um, it's a long time now. The beauty YouTube market is so saturated. There are so many people making YouTube beauty videos and it's been this way for quite some time. Now, maybe if I had done things differently early on, um, I could have gotten a little more momentum at the beginning, but there's a variety of reasons that I feel like I haven't been able to, and I've just like slowly, slowly been kind of building my subscriber base slowly. So consistently uploading, definitely not something that I did early on. Um, I didn't make a pr priority of having like at least one video a week or that kind of thing. I probably took some breaks within that time period. I was really slow to get back into making videos after my first child was born. I was slow in getting back into videos after my second child was born. I probably also took a little break when 
I was in my first trimester with my second baby because makeup made me queasy or just like really scaled back the frequency that I uploaded. And with baby number three, who is still not yet born, um, I took another significant time off, about three months, because again, makeup made me super queasy and I didn't wanna think about it, talk about it, read about it, watch it, anything. And if it were my job, then I probably would have found a way to make something work. Not my job, so I just took a break from it. All of those things certainly impact like how many subscribers, how many people, like just continuing to grow. I know that all that stuff has an impact. Um, just not willing to do this sub for sub type game, not joining communities. Presumably there are communities out there that are to help support each other. I just haven't done any of that. I do Instagram posts really regularly and that's about it. You know, I post videos and I watch other people's videos and I comment on other people's videos sometimes, but you know, I tend to watch the bigger YouTubers, which is as opposed to, you know, going out and finding smaller channels and maybe trying to, you know, build a network that way. I don't know. To me, I watch what I like to watch and I'm not spending my time trying to figure out a way to make to get my channel to grow outside of uploading videos and posting on Instagram. And those things alone combined with, you know, I talk slow. I'm not young. I'm not thin. I'm not gorgeous. You know, all these things, you know, I just didn't have the luck of getting, hitting the right moment at the right time filling some little niche gap that in the beauty YouTuber community that wasn't filled. You know, there are other pale YouTubers out there. There aren't as many certainly as the light to medium crowd. Um, but there are, there are ladies out there that do the same thing that I do. Um, you know, I didn't focus on things like specifically foundation reviews or swatch videos. You know, I haven't been, as focused on that kind of stuff. Who knows, you know? There are so many things that, like, I'm thinking about. Like, why has my channel not thrived? Why can't I get more people to watch? <laughs> why can't I make this minimum threshold now? So, it's like the whole imposter syndrome type thing, because my husband mentioned that, and I'm like, I know, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's all these doubts you have of, why can't I make this work? Does it make sense for me to make videos? Why am I doing this? Am I wasting my time? You know, am I wasting my money? Am I wasting my energy? I know that, you know, I get comments from people and they say it's helpful and that makes a huge difference in me wanting to make videos for sure. But then, you know, you'll have this moment like of crisis of like, what am I doing? What am I even doing here? So, so that's the situation. Um, so as of like next month, my monetization is going to get turned off. I'm not going to get any money back from YouTube now for making videos. And, uh, for reference with the amount of like views and subscribers and all that jazz that I've had, it's translated to about a hundred dollars a year, a year. So it's not about the money per se, but when it's like, a little motivating kind of fun bonus like well I like making these videos I like doing this but it is a lot of work you know recording the video finding time to record the video finding time to edit the video um, uploading it reviewing it all that stuff that's a lot of time and some of that is not very fun you know editing videos can be pretty tedious and not a lot of fun and making the time for it when you have two soon to be three small children is challenging and I think about that too you know this baby is going to be born in March and 
I'm already just like I'm at my limit energy wise, patience wise. I just I don't have much left right now. So I can I feel like I can do one video a week right now, but like pre recording videos for so that I'll have stuff after the baby's born that looks like it's not going to happen. So then where are we? We're in the same place where I just take a bunch of time off and it's like, well, what do you expect, Nicole? How do you expect the channel to ever go anywhere if you keep taking these long breaks? But then there's just real life of having a newborn and having two other small children, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. So yeah, it's just, it's, it's a tricky thing. And you see other YouTube people that have kids and they make it work, but it's, it's their job. They're getting paid a, a good amount of money to do that job. And who knows what sort of accommodations behind the scenes are happening so that they can do that job. There are people that just have a lot more energy than I do. I am a very low energy person as I'm sure is not surprising based on how slowly I talk and move and do everything. So I think it's a little bit more challenging for me to squeeze things into the day, you know? And by nature, I am kind of a lazy person, probably because of that low energy level. Um, so, you know, if it's down to getting up at like five in the morning in order to record a video, I'm not a morning person, so that's probably not gonna happen. And by the end of the day, I'm so wiped out that I just wanna relax, you know? So it's, it's tricky right now. The time that I have to do these things for the most part is when my two year old is napping or during quiet time and nap time on the weekends when my four year olds in his room playing and the two year old is napping. Once there's a newborn, they're not going to be on this convenient schedule of sleeping while the other one sleeps. And there is a good chunk of time typically when you have two little ones where they're on opposite schedules. So as soon as one wakes up, the other one's ready to go down. So you don't get any break during the day. So in that case, the only time that I can really make it happen is on the weekends. And when my husband can be taking care of whoever is awake. Or if the baby is being cooperative during the two year old's nap and they can just kind of hang out. There's, there's a time where that seems to happen. There's kind of a sweet spot of where they're not like newborn, but they're also not mobile. So you can just like stick them in a bouncer or something and they'll just hang out. So anyway, this sounds like to me, I feel like it sounds like a ton of excuses, but there's just a lot of things kind of going on and I just wanted to put that out there. And if anybody else that's watching this also has a small channel and they're affected by this, I think I'm kind of on that borderline of where if I had been fully active, I probably would have been close at least to that cutoff. But now right at this moment, I'm pretty far away from it. Um, and it's just, it's, it was so disheartening and so demotivating and discouraging and all of these words that start with D, um, to get that email and, and realize that what it feels like is YouTube is saying, we don't value your channel and their, their reasoning behind it. You know, they talked about, they're going to have like a manual review process for the larger channels, the preferred, whatever. I don't, I'm so outside of that, like YouTube community drama stuff that I have a vague idea of what's happening there, but I don't know what the preferred stuff is. I don't, I, I don't, I watch what I watch. I watch my subscriptions and I don't know what's going on and the like trending and blah. I just don't pay attention to it. So I'm totally outside of that. That doesn't mean anything to me. But the other thing that they were talking about is, you know, bad actors and channels that are just like reposting other people's content and finding that and trying to like weed out all of these smaller channels that are, I don't know, the reasoning that they gave that affected me personally, to me didn't make a whole lot of sense what it makes, what makes sense to me as, as a business, they're looking at, you know, we don't pay a lot of money 
to all these people, but there are a lot of people and we pay a little money out to them. And if we could take away that, while it's not much per person, it adds up to a lot of money that they can recoup. So as far as I can tell, it's just a business choice, you know, like, well, these people aren't very active or maybe they are active, but not a lot of people are watching their videos. They're not depending on that money. So we can take it away and it's not a big deal. That's what it, sound, it feels like to me. And I'm sure that there's a good chunk of people that that affects that don't use YouTube much anymore and they're not, it's not gonna be a big deal to take that away because it's like, well, I wasn't really making anything anyway, so, you know, I've never gotten paid, I don't foresee ever getting paid, whatever. But for the people that do have like active channels that are really trying to make their channel go somewhere, that I think, that's where that whole cutoff thing really kinda hurts. So, anyway, I, <sighs> I know that I really kind of rambled and probably went outside the scope of this, the the topic, but I just kind of wanted to talk about like what cha what changed, why it bothered me so much, um, and just kind of get it out there that it's like that's really <laughs> it's a major bummer, and it's if it affected you and you are in the same boat as I am, I'm really sorry. I I don't know what to say. All I can. <laughs> could hope is that, you know, maybe there's a, a strong reaction from the community of little tiny YouTubers that they reconsider what their thresholds are, but I just don't see that happening because we're not really affecting the bottom line to begin with. So, eh, whatever. It's, it makes me feel better to kind of get my feelings and thoughts and whatever out there. So I hope that maybe this could help if you are also affected by it or if you were curious after I had posted my post on Instagram, I'll put the information about the, I'll just put the, maybe the Instagram post down below so you can see the verbiage they gave us. Um, and maybe I'll just put the full text of their explanation. I think there's a blog post on YouTube site about the change. So that will probably go into more details about why they did what they did or so they say <laughs> um so yeah let me know if you have any questions comments you know as i i continue i plan on continuing to make videos i'm not doing this to say you know screw youtube i'm not doing this anymore you know that's not what this is about certainly but it just yeah, I just wanted to share my feelings on what happened just because it was a pretty significant event and um, I had some really strong feelings about it. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. So I hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I guess now more than ever, please subscribe if you uh, are interested in seeing videos from me in the future and keep watching the videos. I can't really get people to watch a longer portion of my video than they already do, but I really appreciate you guys who have been subscribed and have been watching and have been commenting and liking all that stuff. I mean, it really does. It, it helps keep me motivated to make videos. And right now, I could use some of that help. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.